I would like to know is it better to add tolerances tolerances for tolerances for the 3D part in the scats before you make the body or after by projecting the body and adding the tolerances there. So I love this. This is a good topic. If you go back into the live streams, you'll find out I talked about this before. I get myself in trouble. Tolerances for 3D printers. We got the Ultimaker right over there. Um, so how do I recommend um, doing that? Actually, I did a video. Um, if you go back out to your to Fusion, if you do, um, I think it's called My Mistake 3D Printing. That's what I called it. Right here. My first 3D printer mistake using Fusion 360. In that video, um, I talked about some of, of my learnings with using this awesome Ultimaker. And I brought up uh, that I made some gauges. Because when it comes to figuring out tolerances on your 3D printers, it is a little bit of a nightmare um, to try to figure out. What I did was, um, if we go over here, and why? Oh, did you know that you can sort this all here? In I always like last updated. Click on that little gear icon. So what I did was I created uh, these gauges, um, and I will tell you that if you are, I'll remind me in the comments and I put a link to this file. But if um, in in this you will actually see in this video. It is right there. You can download these files um, here for free. Just go and download these um, when I'm all these up. Because every 3D printer is different. And it's hard to, um, to find out what kind of tolerance should you have when parts need to fit together. Um, and you have two different options inside of Fusion. Two, maybe more. You have a couple of different options inside of Fusion 360. I would personally drive it by the dimensions in the model. So when you're sketching things up, so if we go using this gauge, for example, we go and edit this sketch, you will see that you can adjust it. So what I would do, what I did was I made this little gauge here, I printed this out, these two out, and then by taking one and to put it over to the other, you can kind of see how they fit and figuring out kind of what the tolerances are on your specific 3D printer because there is no rules. Now, if you find out that, for example, um, the one here that is two inches by two thousands fits very well with this one, then you know that when you're trying to fit two things together, that in this case, four thousands might be a good, a good tolerance. Then when you are printing or modeling things up that got to fit together, then you apply that tolerance to your sketch. So you would actually go into your dimension and adjust it in here. That's what I would do. You could even be fancy <laughs> and go in and if you wanted to and create one of those parameters. And in those parameters, you could create a parameter that you call your 3D print clearance. And, uh, and, and, and put that whatever that value is that you decide it is. Now remember that clearances changes depending on sizes. So the more surface area, normally you need a bigger clearance area. But you could apply this one in here, um, and now from now on, uh, whenever you uh, are doing something in here, um, you could just add that to whatever you want. So if I went in here, if I had to make an adjustment, two things had to fit, now I could just say plus, and I could ha add that that clearance in there, whatever. Uh, maybe I'm going a little bit sidetracked. So this is one way. That is absolutely what I would do. Hands down, I would primarily do that. But know that you do have the op option to offset a face. If we hit a, a Q for press pull, and we select the face, we can actually add in here. So I can go minus that whatever it is I want, and this is now gonna get a little bit smaller. So no, or if I go the other direction, 
if I make it, you know, bigger, I can actually offset um, this face and make it a lot bigger. So be aware of that you have different options. I would absolutely say for me, for what I'm doing, I am always doing it in the sketches. It can be a little bit of a, a pain in the neck, but that's what I would do. The other thing, uh, and I hope this is useful. So again, that file, download it. The other thing, Bernie, you're talking about is that if you are making, using the whole thread tool inside of Fusion, just like we did the counterball a little bit earlier in a video, if you're using the fret tool, that it actually makes the hole smaller uh, or changes the size when you apply a thread. Yes, and that is because Fusion, being a mechanical CAD tool, is using the machinery's handbook to do the threads. And I have made a video about that. So it actually adjusts the, the thread to be right for the, for the machining's handbook. What it means if you were drilling and tapping and machining, you would do that. So you're gonna have to adjust for that. Now, of course, don't forget that you also in here have the scaling tool as your one of your magic uh, ninja tools in here. So if you're doing a thread and you, you find that it's tight, you might just be able to scale things up playing around with it. But this is one of the things um, when you have a mechanical CAD tool that, um, that you're gonna have to do that work with your 3D printer. Bernie, I hope that was useful. Go and check out that video, download that uh, gates, 3D print it out. Um, again, if I, I'll leave a comment if I don't if I don't remember and I attach that file and you can uh, you can download it that way.